I've got a lot to do, but not so much time to do it. This got it. Yeah. Got it. Well, I think all of us can, can relate to that. We've all kind of been there. And you, you uh, wrote in, in your question when you said you were feeling kind of stressed because you're not mm -hmm. sure if you were practicing correctly in the time that you have, right? Yeah, yeah indeed. Okay. All right. Well, there's many ways we can talk about this, but the main one, I think, is about the mindset that you have about both practicing and the, and the time that you have. The reason I clarified this point that you said you're feeling stressed about how correctly you're practicing, how effectively you're practicing. Mm -hmm. You will have, feel a lot less stress if you remove the words correctly and effectively from your vocabulary, like, forever. <laughs> and I know this sounds maybe a little bit shocking, and like, when my, on my like, Practice Guitar Now website that I have, I actually, I'm guilty of using the words like correct practice, perfect practice, effective practice, and I probably shouldn't. I only fairly recently kind of realized that these words are actually damaging to, to many guitar players. Let me explain why. When you think of practicing as like a black and white type of thing, whether it's either effective or it's ineffective, or it's correct or it's incorrect, it's never actually like that. There's no such thing as perfect practice. Nobody, no human being on earth practices perfectly. So if you realize that, then the, the only thing that's left is just trying to get better. So whatever it is you're doing today, it's effective, using quotes, effective on some level, otherwise you wouldn't be able to play anything. But you're clearly able to play something. So you already have some degree of effectiveness to your practicing and your playing is proof of that. Now, your playing may not be where you want it to be and that's, that's okay, that's why we are here, that's why we're here working to get better. So the main thing to focus on when you practice, whether you sit down to play for eight hours or for five minutes, is to ask yourself, what can, what's like the one thing I can do today to get just a little bit better than I was yesterday? And if you just focus on one thing you can do better, one thing to focus on in a way that you haven't focused on before, automatically all the stress that you have just disappears. And you just immerse yourself into that process. And by doing that, number one, you don't feel stressed anymore. Number two, you actually get better in the time that you have because you're focused on getting better instead of stressing out, oh, is, is this right? Am I holding the pick right? Am I splitting up my time correctly? All that stuff is just mental garbage that's just weighing down the things that could be making you better. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Certainly. Yeah, so adapting this mindset, even if you've done nothing else, is already going to help you a lot. And if you take lessons, do you take lessons from Tom uh, Hess or anybody? Uh, with uh, Anthony in school. A Anthony, okay, yeah. okay, great, Anthony, all right. Great, so Anthony's a great teacher, so he, I'm sure he gives you lots of great stuff to practice. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to worry about, is my stuff that I'm practicing good or is it horrible? Of course it's good, because Anthony is good. Now it's just a matter of how do you approach it when you practice. So. Have you ever heard this word, Kaizen? It's a Japanese word. No. Okay. Let me write this on the board. So it's a Japanese word. It's the only Japanese word I know. And it means basically small, gradual improvements. In Japanese corporations, they have these things called Kaizen Blitzes, which is kind of weird because Blitz is a German word. Anyway, uh, so it basically means they have like intense periods of focus on just in improving efficiency in the things that they do, just little small tiny improvements that over time add up to a lot. So that's the mindset I want you to have, the Kaizen mindset. If it, if it helps you, write down the word Kaizen in your practice amp, like tape it to your amp or something so that you always look at it. Whenever you feel stressed, just look at it and just remind yourself, hey, it's cool. I'm not, I, I'm not practicing today so I can play like Ingve Malmsteen tomorrow. I'm just practicing so I can be a better Tim tomorrow than I am today. Do you know the term transferability? Have you ever heard Tom Hess talk about it or maybe Anthony? Transferability is when you practice an exercise, it trains a skill that transfers to many, many other areas of your playing. It has like a ripple effect to many areas of playing. Like for example, directional picking, if you practice any scale sequence, any one of the billions of possible scale sequences with directional picking, you're gonna get better at directional picking. And getting better at directional picking makes you better at all the scale sequences you practice. Mm -hmm. 
So when you have limited time to practice, besides all this mindset stuff, transferability is the other thing to, to focus on. Meaning, try to pick an exercise, like one or two, that makes you better at multiple things at the same time. Like if you work on, let's say, two hand tapping, just one example off the top of my head, this has a super low level of transferability because it only makes you better at tapping. It doesn't help your directional picking, doesn't help your sweep picking, kind of helps your legato a little bit, I guess, but it doesn't help your two-hand synchronization. So that would be something not to practice when you have super limited time to mm -hmm. practice. So go through the things you work on. So obviously, practicing your songs is important, so you, you got to work on that. And beyond, beyond the... Okay, here's, here's, here's something that will help you. When you're working on the songs, there are certain... You, you will naturally find that you lack certain skills that hold you back from playing songs the way you want. So in terms of skill development, what to focus on are the skills that help you get better at those songs. So you get better at the skills and get better at the songs. So your general playing improves and you get better at the songs too. Mm -hmm. So without a specific song example, that's as specific as I can get. But does, does that make sense or is that con too confusing? Yeah, no, I uh, understand. Yeah. Okay. So let, let me give you something. Let me give you a specific example, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say you are practicing something that uh, in your song requires you to change from rhythm guitar to lead guitar. So you practice that part of the song, and then you also practice some additional exercises that, that train your ability to switch between rhythm guitar and lead guitar. So changing pickups, that will be done during your general part of your practice time, and during the repertoire practice, you just practice the songs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool? Yeah. All right. Hey, did you like the video? If you did, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell so you're notified every single time I upload new videos just like this for you. And one more thing, if you're not interested in playing guitar fast, then ignore everything I'm going to say next. But if you've already tried the old starting slow and gradually building up speed method and you've hit a plateau and you already know that the traditional methods for building speed don't really work all that well, Hit the link below and I'm going to show you a new and different way to build speed that most guitars don't know about that helps you get faster without doing any slow practice. It's pretty cool. I taught it to hundreds of guitar players who paid thousands of dollars to watch me teach it live to them. You get to watch a recording of the masterclass. Just enter your email address and I'll send it right over to you. Hit the link below and I will see you soon.